Hello everyone, I'm Zerong Li from Rutgers University. Today I would like to talk about efficient non-sampling knowledge graph embedding. My presentation will follow like this. First, I would like to introduce our background and motivation. I will show the problem definition of knowledge graph embedding. Based on this problem, we propose non-sampling knowledge graph embedding framework. In this part, I will introduce how we improve time and space efficiency. Then we conduct experiments and I will show the result of the experiments. Last part is conclusion and future work. Knowledge graph is widely used in recommendation system and web search. Knowledge graph can store and process complex relations between data entities. We can see data, uh, we can see entities as nodes and relations connecting entities as edges. However, knowledge graph suffer from high computation space cost from large scale data sets. Even though the data is very large, the number of connection or edges is very small. That means the negative instance, the number of negative instance is very small. So most current knowledge graph embedding models use negative sampling instead of using the whole data. They only consider part of the negative instance during each training epochs. Comparing with using the whole data to train, negative sampling based data, uh, ne negative sampling based methods have higher efficiency, but a little unstable, and it may hurt the currency. We, however, uh, reconsider using the whole data set. We consider all the negative instance during each ep epochs. We propose non-sampling knowledge graph embedding framework, and we propose a solution to solve the high time and space complexity for typical models. And we show that it, this framework can be applied to many existing negative, negative sampling based med models and improve the efficiency and accuracy. So here, it shows the example of knowledge graph, and we can see the notebook as the head entity, United States of America as the tail entity, and country as the relation between them. So this connection is described as the head entity, relation, and tail entity. And in this formula, H and T stands for the head and tail entity, R stands for the relation. And CHRT is just the weight of the triple. And we use square laws to train the knowledge graph. And FRHT here is the ground true or true value. If the triple HRT is in the it is the positive instance, the ground true is one. And if it is the negative instance, the true value is zero. And f hat is the scoring function. We know different models have different scoring function. And if we would like to, if we would like to improve the efficiency after using the whole data, we may have some constraint on the scoring function. So here's the detail of our framework. We first rewrite the square loss function. We just expand the formula and merge them. You can see formula have three parts. The positive instance part, LP, all instance part, LA, and the remaining part is the constant. We can see here, we use C plus and C minus instead of CHRT for each triple. We set the uniform weight for all positive instance as C plus and C negative for the all negative instance. Since we know the knowledge graph is extremely sparse, the computing bottleneck will locate on the LA 
and we can see here the time complexity of LA is O E squared times R times D. E is the set of entity, R is the set of relation, and D is the dimension of embedding vector of re a relation and entities. It, we can see it is too slow according to the time complexity. We need to improve the time complexity if we want to use all data. A typical form of scoring function is the inner product or the sum of head entity embedding vector, tail entity embedding vector, and the relation embedding vector. Or we can, uh, or the scoring function may be the sum of the inner product. If the scoring, fo uh, scoring function looks like this, we can rewrite the LA part as this. We can see after we write the LA, the nested loops become the parallel loops. The time complexity, of course, become much smaller. It is only the set the E plus R times D square, since we know that the dimension of the vector is much smaller than the set of entity and relation. So it's, it's a much better improvement on time complexity. Uh, we need to mention that the number of models with such featured scoring function is not small. We can see this mode, simple and chance E and complex has such feature. However, we know that uh, we are talking about how to improve the time capacity element-wise. And we know calculating loss function element-wise is too low efficient when we applied on neural network models. We'd better calculate it by matrix or vectors. So we need to do the following part. Here we show how we improve the space efficiency. Uh, we use three metrics, H, E, R, E, T, E, to store the embedding vectors and calculate the three metrics as the intermediate matrix parallelly. You can see here is the MH, MR, and MT. And we can verify that MH equals to the transportation of HE times HE. And LA, we can verify that it is the sum of the element-wise product of these three metrics. And here we can see that the time complexity is just the matrix multiplication, which is very fast in neural network models. And space complexity is just E plus R plus D times D. This is almost the same as the storing vectors, since D is much smaller than E plus R. And if we want to store the embedding vectors, we need E plus R times D. And why would like to why we would like to uh, improve the space efficiency? Because less space complexity means we need fewer batches in each training epochs. And we know that fetching batches may take a lot of time. And fewer batches means less training time. And it is very important in our process improving the efficiency. So here is the our experiment part. We use two typical data sets and the task is link prediction. We use four baselines, as we mentioned above, this mode, simple, complex, and trans E. And we use the baseline implement by OpenKE. It is an open source uh, project uh, implement different kinds of uh, knowledge graph embedding models. We apply these base models to non-sampling knowledge graph embedding framework and comparing the performance before and after using our framework. Last, we use three metrics to evaluate. We use MRR and mean rank 
and heat ratio at n. So here's the first result of heat ratio at 10. You can see in the graph, in most cases, our performance is similar or better than the baseline. And second, it is the result of mean reciprocal rank. In most cases, in all cases, our models after using our framework is better than the baseline. And in most cases, we have large improvement. And we also conduct experiments on some hyperparameters. However, due to the time limit, we will only show the result of C negative, which is negative instant weight. Since we just uh, we just want to consider the ratio of C plus and C minus, so we set the C plus as one, and change the value of C negative. Uh, from the result from the feature figures, we can see that uh, C negative is has high influence of our performance. If the C negative is setting too large. We know that the negative samples, a negative instance, is much more than the positive instance. So if the C negative is too large, it may have class imbalance problem, which may hurt the performance. And if the C negative is too small, our models will overfit on positive instance and lose the information on negative instance, which may also for the performance. As you can see, the conclusion is consisting with the number of negative samples in negative sampling based methods. And the last part of our ex experiment is the training time. We show it to show, uh, we post it to show that our framework improved the efficiency. And after using our framework, the training speed is much faster. And the last part is conclusion and future work. So we talk about the knowledge graph is very important and useful in different application scenarios. We propose an applied non-sampling knowledge graph embedding framework to some ex existing non negative sampling based models. And since we use the all instance, we have the problem of high time and space cost, and we propose a solution to it. Last, we show the result that we have better performance and much faster training speed after using our framework. For the future work, however, we would like to Think about using non-sampling methods or more complex HGE models or more complex graph structures like GNN. And that's all. Thank you for listening. I'm Zelong Li. Questions and suggestions are welcome. Thank you.